welcome back to our 11 acre property here in New South Wales. We've been living with our off-grid system for about two years now. Today we're going to take you through what system we installed, why we installed it and is it big enough? Let's go and have a look. The system we installed was 14 kilowatts of lithium batteries, 7 kilowatts of solar and a 6 kilowatt inverter charger. Our panels are installed on our shed roof and they're in two different arrays, each of three and a half kilowatts. These panels here are installed at 47 degrees to the horizon, which makes them really good for collecting our winter sun. These panels over here are at 10 degrees and they're ideal for summer. By installing our system on our shed, it freed up the space on our roof. The roof pitch on our house is at 35 degrees, which is great for a winter setup but it's not ideal for summer. And at that pitch, it presented quite an issue for the solar installers. By installing the solar on the shed, it meant that we could keep the overall size of our house down by not needing to include a dedicated room for inverter and batteries. One question we get asked about our solar system in a metal shed is does it get hot? We've had it in the shed for two years now and we do get consecutive days where it's over 40 degrees. We've not had a problem as yet. We do have a vent on our shed that does let some excess heat out. And by the hot afternoon, the sun is over the other side of the shed, which I think it helps. Now Dad's going to show you through our solar system. We designed our system with the help of a local solar company. They came and did the entire installation for us. The 6 kilowatt constant, 12 kilowatt surge output battery inverter charger, as well as the single phase 5 kilowatt solar inverter. The BYD battery monitor allows us to keep an eye on the status of our batteries at all times. As you can see here, we have a Honda backup generator. The best part about this system we have here is that it's scalable. So as our energy needs increase, we can just increase our system. Around the farm, wherever we've needed power, we've always gone for the solar option, whether it be to run an electric line inside our fence to keep our dogs in, or whether it's just on top of the potting shed to run a water pump to water the veggies. We've never run any power from the shed out to any of the devices or to any utilities that we need. Originally we thought we'd be connected to the grid. I mean, hey, there's a power line running right past the end of our driveway. We hadn't even entertained the thought of being on solar. We just thought it would be too expensive. But what ended up being the expensive part was being on grid. It was going to cost us over $80,000 to run power down to the house. We just couldn't afford that. Connecting to solar was a lot less than the grid connection and it meant there were no ongoing quarterly bills. For us, our quarterly bills could exceed over $1,000 and that's before the current price hikes. So that meant in our first year of living here, we were potentially going to have spent $84,000 on getting power supplied. So that just wasn't an option. Is this system big enough to run our house? Like every house, we have a base load. We had to consider the running of the fridge, the freezer, the septic system, all in our calculations to make sure that we didn't run out of power on a daily basis. Every day we run things like our coffee machine, our kettle, our dishwasher and washing machine, also our oven. They're all electric and they all put pressure on our system. In summer and winter we also run our air conditioner and the system also runs the workshop. To take the pressure off our system we have a gas cooktop and a gas hot water cylinder. One thing that seemed quite important to people was could we run an electric dryer? Well, the answer is yes. And we did actually install one, but I made Dan take it out because with our fireplace and our indoor clothesline, I found that we didn't need it. Was the original system big enough to run our house? Well, yes and no. See. It was fine over summer, but we found during winter we were draining the batteries down below 50%. The solution was really simple. What we did was we invested in another 14 kilowatt hour battery, which 
upped our battery capacity to 28 kilowatt hours. This is not exactly how we thought we'd live our lives. But now that we are off grid, I don't know that we could ever go back. I mean, we produce all our own power right here. We're totally unaware of the local blackouts, which seem to happen quite often. In the upcoming videos, we'll show you what it takes to run our house on a daily basis. We will show you what we can and can't do on overcast days and can I steal a game? Let's find out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.